cold ground. Here, here. Hard at work, I see. How did you? <laughs> it is time. We set up camp to the north. Meet me there. Gentlemen, let us away. First it was too cold, now it's too goddamn hot. And humid too, as I eat swamp, I tell you. Uh, to say nothing of the mosquitoes. Warm weather and bugs are soon to be the least of our worries. What? You mean the bulldog? <laughs> Please. We'll be in that one's beef soon enough and on to the next. Where's your boy Lee gone off to? Returned to finish out his service under Braddock. I imagine the Bulldog's none too pleased after the stunt we pulled. Pleased to spin a tale of my incompetence and beg forgiveness. He is away with words, especially when it comes to flattery. I expect he'll be welcomed back with open arms. Which would give us a man inside. Precisely. I see you've been busy. All these men are from many different tribes, united in their desire to see Braddock sent away. The Abenaki, the Lenape, the Shawnee. And you? Who do you stand for? Myself. What would you have me do? Well, you will help the others to prepare. Follow. They come. Everything all right, sir? Just savoring the moment. No doubt, many wonder why it is we've pushed so far west. These are wild lands as yet untamed and unsettled. But it shall not always be so. In time, our holdings will no longer suffice. And that day is closer than you think. We must ensure our people have ample room to grow and further prosper, which means we need more land. The French understand this and endeavor to prevent such growth. They skirt around our territory, erecting forts and forging alliances, awaiting the day they might strangle us with the noose they've built. This must not come to pass. We must sever the cord and send them back. This is why we ride, to offer them one last chance. The French will leave, or they will die. Now is the time to strike. Wait. To scatter the expedition is not enough. We must ensure that Braddock falls, else he's sure to try again. I'll disguise myself as one of his own and make my way to his side. Your ambush will provide the perfect cover for me to deliver the killing blow. We await your signal. There, in front of us.
You mean, sir? You are grateful to have served. Edward. Not so fun on the other end of the barrel, is it? Look out! Sir! Where are you off to, Edward? I never took you for a coward, Edward. Come on, then! Such arrogance. I always knew it would be the end of you. Is the end of you. Don't. Hurry before he gets away! I said go! I don't deserve this! You're a hypocrite, Atham! I'm sorry, Edward, but you forced my hand! Death opens a door. It's nothing personal. Well, maybe it is a little personal. Been a pain in my ass, after all. But we are brothers in arms. Once, perhaps. No longer. Do you think I've forgotten what you did? All those innocents slaughtered, and for what? It does not engender peace to cut your way to resolution. Wrong. Whether we applied the sword more liberally and more often, the world would be a better place than it is today. In this instance, I concur.
farewell, Edward. It's done. Now I have upheld my part of the bargain. I expect that you will honor yours. Follow me. No. No! You seem disappointed. I thought that I held a key that would open something here. This room is all there is. I expected more. What do they mean? It tells the story of Yotzitzizu, who came into their world and shaped it for what life might come. She had a hard journey, fraught with great loss and peril. But she believed in her children and what they might achieve. And though she is long gone from the physical world, her eyes still watch over us, her ears still hear our words. Her hands still guide us, and her love still gives us strength. You have shown me great kindness, dear. Thank you. I... I should go.